John chapter 1 verse 18 says, No one has seen God at any time. You accept that? I accept that. No one has seen God at any time. Exodus chapter 33 verse 20 says, But he said, You cannot see my face, God told Moses. No man can see me and live. You, you can't even look at the sun. What can you see God, the creator of all this, heavens and earth? So he says, no man can see me and live. Accept it. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. You'll die, you'll perish. But in Genesis chapter 32 verse 30, God inspires Moses, supposed to be, and tells him about Jacob. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel, Peniel. For I, quoting, for I have seen God face to face. Jacob saw God face to face. But we were told that no man can see God and live. And God is not seen at any time. Now Jacob tells us that he saw God face to face and my life is preserved and I didn't die. Contradiction. Who's inspiring these words? I want to know. The pastor will explain. Yes. Yes, you will, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. Accept it. How can God confuse people? It is the work of the devil. The devil confuses people, not God. Accept it. But in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 25, we read, Therefore, I also gave them up to statutes, laws, that were not good. God gave them laws to people which were not good for them, which were not good. And judgments by which they could not live. That's a devilish thing to do. God does that. He said, I'm not the author of confusion. We believe he's not the author of confusion, but he's confusing, confusing his creation, giving them evil laws, evil, evil statues. The work of God, and the same God is inspiring these two persons to write this. One says, look, God is not the author, and the other one says, he confused the people. I'm reading this from a Christian magazine called The Plain Truth. October 1977. It says, reading Bible stories to children can also open up all sorts of opportunities to discuss the morality of sex. An unexpurgated Bible might get an X rating. I don't know in your Scandinavian countries you have such a thing as an X rating. Not fit for children to see. X rating. An, exp an unexpurgated Bible might get an X rating from some senses. A Christian magazine writes that. Which means, as George Bernard Shaw says, this is the most dangerous book on earth. <laughs> George, he says, keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. That's what George Bernard Shaw says. I want you to go and verify it for yourself, whether that statement of George Bernard Shaw is true or not. But I give you one little sample from the so-called book of God, because it can't be the book of God. I'm reading Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 1. Then Samson went to Gaza. You know Gaza where the trouble is taking place between the Jews and the Palestinians, Gaza and West Bank. Gaza, same Gaza. Same Gaza. Samson, the Jew, went to Gaza and saw a harlot, a prostitute, a whore. What do you call them here? Call girls. What do you call them? Huh? He says, no, in the English language they use beautiful words, hookers and what and what not. Huh? So she went and saw a harlot, a whore, a prostitute there and went in and to her. He had sex with her. Hooray. Hooray. Can you imagine? In the word of God, this guy here is he's a hero to so many people. Bible reader Samson. You know Samson and Delilah? You heard the story, Samson and Delilah? You see the film? I think it's going on somewhere here now, in Stockholm. Samson and Delilah. That Samson, he goes to Gaza. This is, I'm reading the book of God. And he saw a prostitute and he went in unto her. He had sex with her. And what punishment? No punishment. 
He's glorified in the book of God. So I says, now what does it serve? Dr. Vernon Jones, a psychologist of great repute, an American psychologist, he carried out experiments on a group of school children to whom certain stories were being read. And he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character. Even in the narrow classroom situation, you tell stories to children about anything, anything. You are programming the child, the stories you tell. Anything. So whatever you feed them with, sex, rape, murder, incest, you are programming the people. As soon as they get an opportunity, they go and do the thing what they have been reading. We are what we eat and we are what we read. Whatever the type of literature you read, some of the things that you can buy here, if I take them with me to South Africa, I will go to jail for two years in my country. What I can get in London, Heathrow, what I can get in Kennedy Airport in America, what I can buy from here in Stockholm. If I take it to my country, my country, the white rulers, as far as morality is concerned, pornography is concerned, they are so strict that now in this age of mine, he says, you go to jail for two years for carrying such filth. But in the book of God, it is all halal, kosher.